hard and oh. where you coach and all that good stuff. <laughs> I'm Keith Donaldson, I'm a football coach, Quinn football coach from Mays High School. Uh, we scrimmaged the uh, coach uh, the summer, uh, early in the summer, and uh, we run the double wing, so we, we prepared for the double wing, and they lined up with double wing, just jumped out in this formation that I've never seen before. So I'm here to investigate it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Give you some background on him. They beat Long Beach Poly this year. They beat Notre Dame, broke them. 24 game win streak? 35 game win streak. Uh, he's got players in the NFL, every college around. Uh, one of the big stops out here. Division two, right? Division three. Division three. Uh, but they play with everybody. Now I get to embarrass him. He hates this. Uh, Harold Strauss, Colton High School, Division one. They play the big boys. Uh, he made a big run this year. He had a player, uh, what's Bradford's first name? Alan. Alan Bradford. Number one recruit around everywhere. Ended up going to USC. Actually had two players go to USC. Uh, if I remember, he had like seven people sign scholarships this year. Not quite, but almost. Almost seven. Almost seven sign scholarships. Uh, he plays the big boys. Uh, my friends are over at uh, Modern Day, and uh, he played Los Al in the first round. Beat the crap out of them. And modern day was scared to death, and they said that was uh, one of the best things. Uh, they came out there and just worked their butt off. And uh, he's done some stuff. He's pretty much the only team in Southern California running the, the single wing right now. And uh, everybody's like, well, they want to know what the heck Harold's running. And he's going to come talk last year. He talked about merging the double wing and the single wing. And this year he's going to talk about the spin series. Harold Strauss Cal at Colton High School. It's always fun and when you coach talk about a scrimmage in the summer, you know, it's the first week before you play your first game and man, it was like a whole game when we got together. These guys, these kids get after it, man. And our kids like to get after it. We're kind of have the same mold, just different parts of the city. And uh, man, it was a big time atmosphere. It was fun. Uh, biggest challenge for me, if you know me, is trying to soak this in an hour. So just push them buttons real fast, Bruce, and we'll get on after it. And anything you want, I, hopefully I made some copies. It came out and I've got it in the car. Um, if anybody wants anything, if you ever need anything, call. Um, like I said, uh, anybody knows single wing and double wing offense, we've stolen from everybody else, so we give it free to everybody else. So we just share it. Go ahead. That's our shift. We shift into our box formation and to all of our formations out of a double wing. Go ahead. We're just going to move this along. This thing I like about the spinner series is that. They've got to watch, you got to play assignment, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But you got to play assignment football. They've got to, you don't have ten people piling on your your running back and tackle because they're all usually watching people you know go down the field. So um, a little bit of I think school kids community, it's not rocket science. You know what? It doesn't matter if you coach where coach coaches in inner inner LA or if you're out in Colton. It used to be rural, but. You know, I think everything's metropolitan now in Southern California, just about. I, I, I coached up in, a, in Colton, Oregon, which is just a little school in the country. I don't think it matters. Kids are kids. And you can say that kids are, you know, kids are different. They have to face a lot of different problems, which they do. I, I'm glad I'm not I'm a teenager today. But I believe that, I mean, you talk about kids, all kids can learn. You know, I, I have officials all the time. It's, it's kind of, my coaches tease me, have you ever heard Gruden? When they did the special on ESPN, he was calling out plays. Uh, it, my coaches say it's a battle between who has the longest play calls. And uh, but the referee on my sideline, I'll go, "Holy mackerel! Is he going to remember that?" And I'll go, "You know, don't tell me they can't learn algebra. They can learn this stuff. They can learn algebra. And it's just like those little guys. They can't learn to read. That don't kid yourself. They can learn to read. Do you see those little guys? What they were doing up there? You know. So it's not no rock science. It's just you know what, taking the time." And doing it. I've been coaching 28 years, and uh, Bruce told you a little bit. I've been started out in eight-man school, was there for a long time, and haven't been to too many schools, about four schools. Been at, at Colton. Go ahead for uh, the last seven years, actually six seasons. And uh, interesting statistics. Until I came to Colton, I was like a lot of you guys that are here, and a lot of guys that we speak to. I was a uh, double wing guy, and I had the philosophy before that, you know. 
Mark Disciple, and, and uh, ran only double wing when I was in Colton, Oregon. Double wing. In 2000, I came to Colton, and I said, I, I got the guts. I'm going to put it in. And I'd been looking at it, looking at it, looking at it. I was afraid to install it. So I came down to Colton and said, we're going to put it in. We averaged over 3,000 yards, and every year it just kept going up. 4,000 yards, 5,000 yards. This year we had over 6,000 yards of offense for the first time, ever. So, I, you know, we're sold. Go ahead, Chris. We're sold. Players going to college, you know, we talked about it's not rocket science. When I got to Colton and we implemented some programs, and I'm not speaking on that today, I'd like to do that sometime because that's my pet peeve. I love what Jerome's doing because that's my passion, what he's doing right there is the kids. But 10% of our players were going to college, whether they're playing bowl or not. Um, this year, past year, 96%. The, the second year, I mean, the first year I was there, we went up 74%. And 96, 21 out of 22 kids went last year. And this year, if everything goes well, one's talking about the service. We'll have 100% of our kids in the fall going to college somewhere. And uh, that's what it's about. Kids achieving, knowing, and believing that they can at least try. They may not stay there. They may not. They may not be their ball of wax, but they're going to give it a try because that's where that's where the future is. So, go ahead. Single wing at the next level. The only thing I would say there is I, I believe it. Proof. I've been getting in, and I heard a guy back in Pennsylvania. I was really impressed by that runs it, and he gave me his DVD. I got to get yours because I'm sorry. My youth coaches are running double wing. You know, what's neat. We're all together on the same page, and that's our base offense. But they're not sold yet. Are they're afraid on that that direct snap stuff? So you, I put it, it works on every level. And colleges, you know, all they're running single wing. Don't let them fool you. You know that spread Utah crap. All that is is single wing football. So go ahead, Bruce. Bruce and philosophy, and I always share this. You know, this is just if you guys heard me before, you knew this. We can go ahead and put it. Believe in what you do, and hold on to what you believe, and that's morally. Um, goes for everything and kids kids don't need best friends you can still be a best friend but be the adult that shows them what they need and be there a person that needs there be there your kids be there for the kids don't just they got enough best friends you know out there that they need but be the person they need to come to when they need you or the person they want to laugh with still but they know that they can come and talk to you when they need to talk to you and run the offense that you believe in whatever you run you choose to run believe in it run it don't let anybody tell you different. You know, and when you see something like Coach says, all I did was the same thing. Started adding things. When I see something I like, I believe it. All right, let's do it. And put it in. Go ahead. Our philosophy is be the best person you can be. Be the best student athlete you can be. Be the best family member you can be. Be the best community member you can be. And this is what we preach. Go ahead. And we believe the winning takes care of itself. You can accomplish those four things. The winning is going to take care of itself. So enough of that. That's my big commercial to you today, and that's what I'd rather talk on, but we're not here to talk on the spinner. So, adding the, the spinner to your arsenal and bringing it to the table. Go ahead. Adding the spinner, spinner series. This is kind of what's done for us. It's balanced out. We figure we go unbalanced a lot, we're balanced a lot, and we shift and do all those things because we want to balance out the defense or exploit their weaknesses. I like to think of it as a chess game. We feel like that we can... We have a million different formations, and it's not really rocket science. We run a series of plays out of a million formations. Now, when guys are scouting you, they draw every one of those plays, which is great, because that's what we want them to do. Because now they think, what are they running? You know? But it's very easy. Once they know our base offense, all they have to do is small formations and how to get where, how they're going to get to that spot they need to be in. Misdirection, deception. And of course, the defense play assignment football, like I said, you don't get the big pileups, which less injuries. You know, we've been knock on wood. Uh, I think the, the biggest thing we have usually, well, we had a broken hand this year, and those are freak things that are going to happen. This happened to be one of our best players. But he played two weeks later. But it creates favorable matchups versus the defense, especially on the big level. Uh, big level. Massive preparation for opponents. Defensive confusion. Man, you see people running all over the place, just like, you know, I was watching them as he shifted, coach shifted, and uh, some people didn't even move, and other people were just scrambling. Those kids are flying all over the place. We see that at Division One level, and, and they've been watching 10 films, and they're still doing that. So, you know, I think you work at any level. The biggest thing, and here's another thing for us, 
and I believe in having fun. If you came to our practices, um, the atmosphere is very loose, but it's it's very work very work oriented. And uh, coaches, you know, we're lucky enough to have some players coaching. You know, knows what I'm talking about. You got all those scouts coming. One thing they say is your atmosphere is unbelievable. You know, and that's what we try and create. But the athletes really believe it's a sense of ownership. Coach said the only one that's running the single wing. Well, I don't know if I agree with that, but. But our kids feel that ownership. They feel like we're the only one. This is our offense. This is what we're running. And you know, whether whether some parents like it or don't like it, because that's true. You know, there's some parents. Well, I don't want my kid playing that. You know what? And go run that offense with that team. I don't know. It's okay. Be happy. Wherever you're gonna go, have fun. Be happy. It's more deception and to the most productive offense that we've ever found. And that's why I'm gonna stick with it because you know everybody else that we play hates it. So obviously there must be something to it. You're right. So, go ahead. A big thing that uh, I see out there in coaching as a head coach and scouting is the series of plays versus the running collection of plays. A lot of guys, the easiest guys to scout are the guys that get a series of a bunch of plays together and they really like these are their best plays and they run those best plays. Problem is they don't run them out of a lot of different formations. So. First thing we do as scout is we go every formation and we put we draw every single play. We're old fashioned. I just got my Landro. I don't even know how to use it. It's still in the box, but I'm supposed to play analyze. But we watch every film. We we <coughs> draw every play. But we know if they're in a formation, they're going to run this or this or this. Okay, so we teach that to our players. We play pretty good defense. We had the number five defense in the state and number three, I think, in Division One. We were the number one scoring team team in the state and uh, so you know a lot of that is preparation but you want a series of plays you want to be able when we run our plays we want to be able to run we run power trap sweep whatever we run whatever you run you got to be able to run that out of every formation just about everything you run out of one formation you should be able to pretty much run every one of those out of every formation that you use so and we run we run spread we run empty with motion, there's a way that you can get to to still run your direct snap power, or your spinner series, or you know, and you can, you'll see that. But make sure that's the way you put an offense together. Now it's an offense. Not now it's not just a bunch of plays that are good plays. Because you can take good plays and you won't win because people can read what you're going to do. So make sure you set up everything. You've got to be able to set up and set up your defense, and then fool your defense with the other things that you can run. Or make them scout you until they you know, don't have any time left in their life to do anything else. So being able to run the ball, complete series plays, attacking all or most all of the same point of attacks, goes to what I was just saying. Being able to duplicate your passing footwork, that just means that my quarterback, they know that he'll either, he lead blocks in our double wing, obviously, you guys run double wing, but he also runs, you know, blast, he runs trap, he runs the same things out of direct snap, he boots, and he rolls away, or, and on everything, and he knows he reads the end. Well, he does that on every formation that we do. So the opponent doesn't know, just because we line up a certain way, that we're going to run one of these three plays. They still got to prepare for every single formation. That's what kind of drives them crazy. Multiple formations, we get into that. Backfield movement variations create multiple series of plays in your offense. And that's basically with a million formations. I don't know if it's a million, but it's a lot. I don't know. Somebody said the other day they ran 26 formations. I, I don't even know what we run, but creating massive defensive preparation. That's what we want to do. The more they're preparing for your offense, the less time they have to do to prepare for you and what they're gonna, their game plan is going to do. Now, we do things, and you'll see, we huddle to our sideline every so I can talk to my quarterback. We call it the monster. And we just snap it over to the huddle, and they all go running downfield. So they spin our opponent, spin. A lot of time during that week preparing other kids to run over to the huddle. Every defensive, every defensive series, every play, they got to run over and cover it because we snap it over. There. But that's what you want to do. You want to get their minds off of what they're focused and trying to accomplish offensively against you, and make them stand on defense all day long and practice for what you're doing. And the other is drill, 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 drill. You know, um, and I practice long, and, and the all-star guys. We have the All-Star game getting ready. We're picking the All-Star team right now, head coaching that, hopefully for the last time. <laughs> but uh, I enjoy it. You meet the other kids, but they go, they always ask my kids, do you guys really practice like this long? And they're going like, 
longer. <laughs> so, but you know, I know some some people are confined to a certain amount of time. You know, repetition is what it's about to make you successful. Okay, this is our box series. We're going to show you. Our, I think this is a setup. I haven't had a chance to live. I, I presented a lot of this in uh, most of it in uh, Pennsylvania, but I believe this is our splits. Go ahead. Yeah, our alignments. So go ahead. Line splits are six inches, okay, and one foot on between the end of the, and the guard over here on this side. When we go over at balance, we never take both ends over. We number our players. The, our quarterback is one, fullbacks two, three, four. If any, all you guys run double wing, we stay with a double wing philosophy, and because you can you can bring two offenses together, but I guarantee you can't bring two verbiages together. So that's when we went to the single wing. We, that's the difference between our play calling and somebody who runs just single wing. They, you know, <coughs> one to nine, and they go and they flip flop their lines. Well, we we have our verbiage that stays the same, and that way we can run those all those different plays. Our our tight end on, is uh, our doesn't matter if he's tight or split. The ends on the left five odd, on the right six even. Okay, backs left odd, right even. Not rocket science. Kind of keeps me. I'm not the smartest guy. Um, 10 to 12 yards, we can vary. We do a ton of crack blocks. Um, almost everything, especially if somebody asked me about options. We run a ton of options. We run a ton of options with motion. Almost everything we run is crack options. And we kick out any with the motion back kicking out the corner. Um, almost always, everything we do, we try and get over matches and <coughs> everybody in, even on the, on the options. We're at four and a half yards. The backs, we have a mesh point right here. And that mesh point is kind of our own concept where both single wing, they hike it directly to a three back on his inside knee or here inside knee. We, uh, first time we ever did, did this, it was great because these guys forgot who was supposed to catch the ball and the ball went <laughs> about 15 yards back that way. We fell on it luckily and it was third and, uh, third and about 35 or 40, I don't remember, it was, I know it was like 35 or 40 yards. So we ran the same play again. Well, the idea that we went to, instead, both guys are supposed to step to the mesh point. And we taught this when I was back in Pennsylvania, we we're showing that. That way, we got two guys going to catch the ball instead of one. And I guess our chances are probably better to catch the ball. But we step to the mesh point all the time. The next play we ran, that they snapped it before, he ran for it. We ran spinner, and the quarterback caught it, and went right up the middle on a trap for a touchdown. So, it was a 70 yard touchdown. So we thought, okay, this is going to work. We'll run this offense. So, but that mesh point becomes important. Go ahead. Our concept on the mesh point is most defenses, and I picked this up from kind of the midline options uh, a guy that Ty, John Tyree, who coached in our area and coached out you know, a lot of places, just retired. But most guys on defense, and I was a defense guy before I was an offensive guy teach their linebackers to look through the guards <coughs> and read the backs, right? So we came up with a concept of, and, and being a double wing guy, the severe angle blocking was just a new term for us. We are already severe angle blocking in our double wing, but what we did was we decided that by stepping to the mesh point with both of our backs, it created an inside step, and if you watch film, almost 99 times out of 100, the backers will step. Now, even if they're cross-reading, they're going to step forward because they still got that back stepping. And we're, what we feel like we're doing is we're setting up our a better block for our uh, linemen. And when they step, that just gives us another step to get to our point of attack and get them. So it's just a concept that we came up with, and. As we go into that, we're going to show you what the one back does, but basically he steps right to the step with his inside, it'll be a crossover step. So if I'm the quarterback, I'm going to cross over, catch the ball, and right here on my hip, I should have my back complete, just like all single wingers, right behind, nobody can see what's going on. This back, my three back, He's doing the same thing. We both, all of our backs are just like this. You know, I like to get, I want to try and get them lower too. I don't know, you guys, the three back, we tried the three point. My freshman do a three point, but 
the big guys, I don't know, they just don't feel comfortable, but he basically takes a crossover step too. So we're at the same mesh point. The only difference is, is his hands ought to touch the ball off that, off that. You'll see that we don't do it all the time. Fakes aren't always perfect, but get that concept where he's reaching for the ball and pulling, and his first step. So as he crosses over, it's a plant step, and now he bellies out of the way. That belly step, <coughs> that belly step allows for the spit, the other back to come, the other faking back, four back to come through. So as you get both of them stepping cross over to the mesh, there's the mesh point. I pull out. As soon as I pull out, we want that other back coming through. So it's just like that at the same time, the spin and then going. Okay, that's the concept. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> what we think about it, the other thing we like about it is it's consistent uh, snapping point for the centers. They don't have to worry about remembering, do I snap here, do I snap here? The only time they have to remember they have a different snap is when they're going to snap to the up back. In the wedge, trap, we do different things with them on either side. So that's it, and we just call snap 22. We call, if we're snapping directly to somebody, we just call, you know, snap 30, wherever he's going, snap one, you know, 12, snap 22, wedge, um, wherever he's going. So, but that makes it easy for the centers to remember. All he has to do is get it knee high, four and a half yards back. So our centers come out before practice. They're supposed to go out every day and snap it about 50 to 100 times with a partner, just trying to get it knee high and get it directly to them in a semi-hard um, but not too fast, you know. It's a, we, I like the term. Somebody gave us the idea of using a lawn chair, and that works really good. You, get, you put it in a lawn chair, and you guys have heard that before about knocking it over. We did that a lot. Now our centers have come along, so they just work with each other and a coach. And you'll see some of that in a drill. Creates better blocking angles. We talked about that because it, their step in allows us to get a better uh, angle on them. Go ahead. Okay, all right. Well, one back uh, directions out of this. Go ahead. First thing he's doing is the crossover step. You saw that? Now, he can attack all those holes. Okay? All those holes, if we go, if this would be box spin, he can go 15, he can go 13, he can go 12, he can go 14, he can go 6. And we can, we can uh, mesh, I mean, we can wedge those, we can trap those, we can call it double trap. We run double traps in some different onside traps, some different types of blocking schemes uh, for our linemen. Obviously, probably a little bit farther than what you guys would do for little guys, but you can do the same thing, just wedge block and everything. So the idea is still there. Okay, go ahead. He also can roll. What we do, he, I, as soon as he spins, the faking's taking place. If we're running both backs through and we go spin, and we'll show the different formations, different types of spins that we do. But as soon as he spins out and looks, he's eyeballing that in. If he sees that in's eyes, he just reads in. If he can get outside, he's going to get outside. If he can, he steps up. That's what that arrow is. Go ahead. Same thing the other side on a boot. He can do all those. So that's all his running patterns. Okay, go ahead. The three back lanes. Okay. Same thing, crossover step. Goes into his sweep. He also can take direct snaps and go at all angles right there. We also spin and run a counter. I didn't draw it in, but he he can go and take the outside handoff and come back and run the counters into the two and or three and five holes. Okay, go ahead. And we also what we do is we do a kick out trap right here. So if they're really playing us on the sweep, what we do is bring it. We kick it out. We kick that double kick out here. We'll actually take that sweep and just cut it. We call it an eight trap. Is what we call it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, four back lanes. Obviously, he's going to come through. The idea to make sure you have these guys, what we work on, you're going to see in film in just a second. We drill, 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 trying to get these guys to get that mesh point together. That's what causes, if you get the mesh point together, you're going to have success. Guaranteed. You're going to have success because now the defense has to step. And most of the time, what we're seeing now in defenses is they're waiting to see where the ball is. Instead of killing us up front, they're waiting to find the ball, and now they're reacting to it. We're seeing more and more guys start, uh, people starting to go to like a 3-4, three, 3-9. Three, three, I don't know, they're using 12 players half the time, but, <laughs> you know, three-man front, let everybody stand up and read. And we're seeing that a lot. 
Okay, also he can come back, stop. We throw a ton of screen passes. Okay, so he'll come in, he'll come across, fake, fake. He'll step back and boot, or he'll go ahead and trap. He'll set it up by giving a screen look, and then we'll actually run the screen. He'll boot, come off, or roll and come off, and hit him, and we're pulling away with all the action going away. We have a lot of success with screens. We also have a lot of success. There's a counter that he runs underneath, and also shuffle pass. We do a ton of shuffle passes. Okay? Two back lanes. This is our fullback. Obviously, you have all your wedges. He can run. We, we trap it, and we wedge it. Either way, we just call the what kind of block. We, if we call a wedge, otherwise it's an automatic trap. Go ahead. He also will go motion, or he'll stay out in a flanker look. So we give different formations, and he's already out there. If we put him out there, now you've got the same sweep actions. So you can see the kind of different blocking setups it would do for you. Just whatever. A lot of times, if we just want to move a stud, like you said, you had your middle, your best, that little 18, 28? 27. 27, the little stud. Put him in the middle, cause problems. Well, a lot of times we had the same thing. So what we did was, if they would move him, in fact, Mike was on our sidelines helping us one time. We were having problems against one team. Sam came to he said, that guy's killing you off the edge. I wonder if we move the fullback out if he go with him. We just moved the fullback out in a flanker way out there, and that corner just went right with him. Took himself out of the rest of the game, and we just kept scoring and kept scoring, and we took the game one game, won the championship. Go ahead. Same thing, we go either way, okay? Okay, here's some drills that we uh, we run, and what kind of, you have a remote on that? No, I don't. Okay, that's okay. I'll tell you when to fast forward it through, because the film's a little long, so I want to make sure I don't get too bored here. I want to make sure we get time in and get out, get you out to lunch before you guys die. Hunger, too. But uh, these are some drills that we set up. First thing you're going to see is our uh, center. Center drill with our corner. That's our line coach right there. And he'll come out and practice. This is before the kids are even out. What you're seeing on film is guys, we haven't even been doing anything for since the end of football. And this is about, let's see, when was the Pennsylvania drill was March. So we came out on the field. I said, hey guys, we gotta do some film for a presentation. So they'll be a little scrappy, but you'll get a chance to see. He brings the fullback out, which will be the quarterback for all the single wieners. And uh, he's a fullback for us, he's a big kid. And uh, so we can work our short snaps at the same time. And also it gets him, him uh, some reps of catching the ball before anybody's out there so we're not wasting time later. Works both sides. And center's heads up. Yes, center's heads up. He looks underneath, finds his spot, and then he brings his head up. We find out on our level, man, if you put your head down, it could be trouble. So. We get so many defenses at Stam and stuff, so we want to make sure he knows what's going on. Okay, go ahead and move that forward. If you just get a chance to see that, you can just run that fast forward. But I want you guys to get that. In a second, you'll see him. Uh, there we go. Stop right here. Okay, this is our this is a neat deal. We picked these up from Rogers a few couple years ago when we started running the single wings. I was looking for something I could use for points. So I just take you can just take a disc. You know what this is? This is a this disc right here is a Tupperware top. <laughs> Usually I use the little rubber disc, but I couldn't find one that day, so I just put that down and use that as a, to teach the mesh point, where you want your backs to mesh at. And these guys obviously are uh, kids that play for us. Most of them are seniors. I know the, the backs are seniors. Uh, two of them are going to USC, and then the quarterback is uh, would be going somewhere big, but he's a uh, uh, Latter-day Saints he's going on a mission, and uh, when he gets back, he'll, he should sign big. Um, and line it up so you can move it forward a little bit to see but it gives you an idea and we set these rings up in their path that they should take and we also because we want the backs to make you best use of it we put bags in front of them you'll see anything we can find they got to step over so they got to keep their knees up stay, they got to stay low they got to keep their knees up so you can see the guys they're showing you the paths that they're supposed to take as we teach this would be the way we're coming out in spring and we start teaching or in the summer. We still use these in the summer, and during the season we'll make them use them. But during the season, you got to remember we got three or four backs, sets of backs. So we're just coming in. I mean, we can get a lot of reps done real fast because as soon as he snaps the ball, the next group's coming in and getting and calling their signals. So, but 
This gives you an opportunity to see they're going to run some different things from this angle. And then the real important one is where I'm standing right now talking. What I want to do is stand in front, and you can kind of keep going a little bit until they get ready to run and see. But the idea is I don't want to see the ball. I, want, I don't want to know who has the ball. If you guys can fool me, you did a good job. I show it from this angle so you can actually see the fakes in the backfield. <coughs> in a minute, you'll be able to see it from the front. That's perfect, Bruce. How are you doing that? That's perfect. So there's a good, that's from the side. It was pretty tough to see where, what, uh, where the ball's going. Where I'm standing, if I can see where it is, they owe me push ups. <laughs> so, um, and a lot, and I'll tell you, a lot of times I'm watching a guy and I look and turn around, the ball's on the other side. Um, the easiest one is obviously when the quarterback comes straight through with it. I don't see it until he comes and, and uh, is forward and see the ball up a little bit. But, but we work this drill almost every day. Uh, we just call it box drill and it's our box spin and we run in our different formations. This is our box formation. There shows you the boot. Go ahead and run it forward. And you'll see a couple of formations here real quick. But we'll change formations. Go ahead, Bruce. Go. Yeah, just keep going. I'll tell you when to stop here. Is there in box formation right here? He threw out of it. Uh, let's see here. I think we're going to switch into, OK, stop right here. OK, we just showed how we can move the center out of the fullback over and get a little false looks from the trap. This is a rocker, okay? This is a different spin series that we use. And uh, you'll see it come up again here. We got this, and the rocker, you know, we, we call it, we try and do things picture. Everything I do is picture. Because, rock, you know, obviously we got stole this from someone else, from uh, the symposium. But we call it rocker because the three <coughs> just takes a rocker step back enough for the guy to come through, and then he goes either side or counters or goes full speed or he direct snaps. A lot of times our rocker guy will get the direct snap, take off, and everybody else goes through the formation of the fakes, just like they would on the, out of the box here. Okay, go ahead, run it forward. I don't want to run out of time here, so. we got plenty of time. we got plenty of time? Plenty okay, time. all right. That's why I'm kind of, kind of hustling. we got plenty of time. Get as much in as I can get in, man. I know you guys came a long way here, as only guys. Take your time, folks. Yeah. Crazy, crazy, crazy drone, drone won, the, won the award, I imagine, yeah. for coming the farthest. I got it when I was in Pennsylvania for coming the farthest, you know. So, Is somebody crazy. almost always in motion on the rocker? Yes, I'm sorry, that's a good question. If you notice, we have in the rocker series, we want that back. Oh, uh, okay, that was a mistake you ran inside. That was a little soft point. That was a good point, teaching point. Notice he comes in. This is a sophomore. He's a great back. He runs about a 4-5. He didn't get to play much because we had such great backs. He played a lot of second halves. He's supposed to run in back. And see, you can see the guy stop because they knew he was supposed to run in back. Now he should run it correct. I think we drop it. He's just, you know, he's green. And he's just getting the hang of it. So this is good teaching stuff. That's why we put it on there, left it on there. Now you'll see him. And there's a counter. But we run in motion because we want it quicker. This is one where we want the back to get to the get to the step, and we want him to get. It's we run that on SC or SC formation, which you'll see in a second, where we get a full motion, which we want a full head of steam when they come by. But we show you show you some different ways we run it, and then you'll see it on uh, on the PowerPoint too. But to give you an idea, and this just just a simple drill, and these these rings, I don't know, they're not very expensive. I'm going to try and pick up a couple more. So I'd like to place three or four of them in a row and really make them mad because they'll bonk their head on them, you know, if they don't stay down. Hey, Coach, quick question. I see that your quarterback, the white shirt kid, his feet, his feet are, yeah. straight, are real close, closer than the rest of the kids. Yeah. He also, he, he doesn't like to take a crossover step. Oh. And uh, you'll notice that all my other quarterbacks you'd see in the film, they can go ahead and run that. That's just, yes. I was talking, you know, some teams and stuff, but... For some reason, he's 6'5", 225 pounds, and he's, a, he's not a running quarterback. His little brother and all my other quarterbacks, I, I, I'll show you a film. It goes from year to year back, and you'll see how some are real runners. Everything we want to run is sprint out, but he's in the pocket. This guy is a big-time player. They said he'll be a big impact player in, in uh, college. Um, he just uh, didn't feel comfortable. So I, I, you know, I said, as long as you get the mesh point and turn your back, you know, I'll go with you. You're fine. So, you, you know, it's those things. You know, you go with your talent and what works best. So, with him, he's just, it was just his physical stature. So, we adjusted for it. So, and I think that's the same. You'll see in the same thing. 
He didn't run as many of the traps where he kept it because he was more comfortable. He liked to run the ball. Now on options, he just sticks his head. He's a he's a physical kid, and he'll he hardly ever lift the pitch the ball. Piss me off because you know you want your quarterback carrying the ball <laughs> most time. And uh, but he loves to run the ball, but not in this this series because he just he didn't feel good when he's spinning and, and running. He's more of a straight ahead type guy. So. Now you're seeing us a little more from the front. And uh, what we're looking here, this is what you would see every day. They pulled the, pulled the deals out for you. And uh, what I'm just looking for here is to be fooled. You know, and you gotta remember these guys haven't even touched their football for about six months. So this is the first day of coming out and they were like, Coach, are you nuts? And I said, yeah. So, but it gives you an opportunity. And what, I, the, what I like to explain it is, what you're seeing here is without a line. So picture, and now you got your line back there. Now it's a huge difference of where you're trying to find the ball. If you can't find it now, then what's it going to look like when you get a line there? And that's that's my teaching point when I when I'm showing the drills, is that's the importance of why we would like to work this drill as much as we can. Okay, go ahead and run it forward. And uh, let's see what we are. Right, that was looks like our our SC. I think we're going to be pretty quick because this goes for a while. And I got copies. Like I said, if anybody wants this, you're welcome to any of this. I think I have a few. I think I ran off like 10 of them if they worked. I think it did. But, uh, go ahead right here. Get to see a little bit of this. You're going to see a little. We also, uh, a lot of guys are real excited about the shovel pass and, and uh, off shovel option. Uh, Coach. Dennis running the double shuffle, and now we're running and driving people crazy. And uh, it's a great play, a little dangerous, but uh, we actually, the first guy, they're covering, and he'll, he'll pitch it out, so you get a double pitch, one from the quarterback and one from the, the back that's carrying the ball. And we're going to run it right here, I think. Call that Whirly, Whirly, one back. That's the way that, you know, Whirly, one. Worry one, worry one bounce. You know, the worry word came from a guy in Kansas. You know, and said, okay, sounds good to me. I like it. Here's double shuffle. That's <laughs> wicked in the game. Okay, you can stop right there and go back to PowerPoint. But uh, that's another, that's a whole other thing. I just kind of put it in there to kind of whet your appetite a little bit <laughs> on some of the things that you can do. Uh, so go ahead. So our first formation that we uh, that we spin out of is the box. Okay, go ahead. We shift into the box. What's nice is again you have you have your options one, two, three, four backs they have to worry about. Any of those four can be carrying the ball. You saw the drill a few minutes ago. Now you can kind of picture it. Go ahead. If you're a uh, oh, if you're sure on the double wing, are you always in balance or is the tight end coming over? No, you know what? We're uh, doing all my secrets. No, they're not secrets because it's just everybody has their verbiage. We have set, uh, if we're, when we're in double wing, when we're in our base, we're balanced. We're just straight double wing. We're the jackets, so it's jack right if we're unbalanced instead of, I think we call it heavy. A lot of people call it heavy, a lot of people call it jumbo. I usually use my, not, I told you I'm a picture guy, so when I was, we're the Vikings in Colton, Oregon, so we call it bike right. And then, I don't know, this is bike, bike left, so we never call it right. Right, so this, if we call in balance, that's right. So then we can pre, pre call it. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm working on what Coach did where he could just shift over with the guard. So we have two centers. That, that's kind of a neat idea. I wrote that down because I think I'm going to try that. Go ahead. This gives you a different formation. We call this spread. Now, to answer your question in this, all of our spread, all our spread formations, spread, trips, uh, box, any single wing formation, beside, anything besides double wing is unbalanced unless we call Bruin or Bear. Bruin is smaller than a bear, it's a little bear. So that means we're spread. Bear, big. So we're big, two tight ends. But we'll still be unbalanced, but now we're, we're uh, double tight. So that's how we basically, we pre-call everything and it's in our verbiage. But we can still run spin out of this. This is tight trips, okay? This is a triple spinner. I don't know if you guys, we call this star. 
and I don't, I'll show it later, I think, but basically what you got here is you got your quarterback, your three back, your four back now comes over here and your two back's in his normal spot. We just kept him in his normal spot because he's used to what, what he's doing, but basically you're doing the same things, but you're getting, he, they're stepping to the mess point, so they're coming here. He's going to spin out. He's going to come through on the sweep there. He's going to spin and follow either in the trap or he'll go on his own trap and we'll fake the, fake the snap here. We'll also snap to him, carry out all the fakes, go here, but we're actually going to trap this way with him. But it's just in different looks. That's called a triple spinner. We call it star. Okay. The, reason, the way we can run all this, and I've presented this before because this is the meat of our whole offense right here. If, if this is the way that we can run all the formations and run all the options, I mean all the different options of plays that we can run, is of this. We came up with a blocking grid, my line coach and I. Okay, go ahead. We know that between the three and four holes, that's where we run our traps, that's where we run our blasts. We run some, the only thing I didn't put in there is a short pitches on a double wing, you know, um, when they're loading up the, your six hole. But we run our dives. We can run zone block in there and pass block in there. But we know that anything, our linemen know that anything that's called three or one, two, three, or four, if it's a running play, one, two, or three, or four, they block it the same way. Doesn't matter how, what play we're running, out of what formation, they don't have to know any of that. All they know is, unless we call a wedge block or zone block, they're going to go our double trap. It's just like three markers. But the higher you go, you got to have a few extra little kinks. But they know that they're trap blocking. So in there, if that's trap, okay, trap, unless it's called something else. Go ahead. In the five and six holes, that's where your pitches are, your counters, your reverse, your zone, your pass blocks. Those direct snaps are all exactly the same. We call a direct snap power. So your power is just like a pitch toss. It's the same exact thing. We know that they block it the same way. We know we're going to pull, guard, and tackle. And we're going to block it the same way. The quarterback's going to leap through the hole. Fullback's going to kick out. Goes back to the double wing series. But it's we do the same thing out of our shotgun, out of our spread, out of our any way we line up formation-wise. Sometimes we have to motion to get that deep blocker out there. But somehow we're going to get that, that same kind of blocking right there. For the line interior lineman, the blocking's all the same. Okay, go ahead. On sevens and eights, that's where our sweeps, our toss sweeps, our boots. Um, in our zone, when we go outside zone, eight zones, and where we pass block. We know that we always block it the same way. Unless we have some kind of a, a false key, false call for a fullback or for different people where we want to go the opposite direction and, and give a false look to keep people honest. But with this, these guys up here, they all know that they don't have to worry about anything else. It's real simple. If a play ends in, a, in a, a word, or in a number, I'm sorry, in a word, in a word, so we go 36 power, then our, 30, our snap 36 power would be a direct snap out of a shotgun type situation, they're going to block it the same. Okay? Uh, <coughs> they know if it's snap 22, it's going to be a two trap, so they're going to block it like a trap. But that grid is what's helped us a ton, so we can line up in any formation in the backfield and go ahead and hit it. It stretches, the, that hole is still a six hole. So a lot of people say, well, where, where do you run your pitch? We get that a lot, question a lot when, when you run unbalanced. The six hole is always inside the last guy. So it stretches with it, okay? Go ahead. Box, we start out in our, our uh, unbalanced because it's box, go ahead. Shift, go ahead. You can go motion <coughs> and move. And what we're doing with that is, is uh, fly motion, anything with our fullback. F, he starts with an F. It used to be Fox, now he's fly. It used to be Fox because now we start running Fox and it sounds the same and get messed up. So now he's the flyback. He likes that too because he thinks he's fast now too. <laughs> so, when he's not, he's either a fat guy, you know, the block. <laughs> But, uh, but he does get to play flanker. He can go out for some passes and do some different things. But we show people different looks. Go ahead. Okay, this would be a, a box with a balance set. Shows you can run out of balance set. Go ahead. This is one thing that's really helped us. Out of, we like to do this out of box when we're unbalanced. But all we do is invert the backfield. 
Now, being a defensive guy, you start picturing, okay, what are you going to do defensively? We can run equally to both sides of the ball. Well, probably you're going to see a big shift down to this side, correct? Most, most likely. So we run the ball probably more to the weak side than we do the strong side. But we'll probably equal it out. Okay, go ahead. Uh, backfield actions on the box spin. We talked about it, so now it should, you'll see it. Go ahead. What's nice is you see all those different backs that you got. You don't know who has the ball, and that's why the spinner we think is just probably the, you know that's just one piece of our whole arsenal. But we think it's a uh, one of the biggest pieces that we've ever put in. Our kids love it. Go ahead. Our fans love it. And uh, I tell you, I can't tell you how many old timers we've got. We've stolen away from other schools. They stop watching their kids play or their grandkids play because they want to come over just to watch the team win. And uh, and our stands, you know, have been full of knock on wood. We've had some success. Go ahead. This will be your 38 sweep. Go ahead. Oh, this is just to see if you were awake. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. That's the real deal. When I was in San Antonio, they were at the game taking a few photos, you know. Only, they only took it with the good looking guys. But I just want to make sure you guys are awake, man. Go ahead. Okay. This shows the motion 38 sweep. It shows the action. And uh, Red obviously gets the ball, and we pull both guards, and now we're pulling the onside tackle as well um, in our 38 sweep because a lot of times we're finding that people can't catch us from the backside. As long as we don't have a down block, we tell them to go ahead and go. So sometimes we have three guys pulling along with everybody else on that. Okay, go ahead. How do you, how, go how ahead. You, yes. Stop. How do you call this play in the huddle then? This would just be, this would be box spin 38 sweep. Okay, just as it's written. Yeah, as it's written. Box spin, 38 sweep. And what happens is you see him, he dives. The two backs diving right here because the guard's pulling here. We don't worry about, he's cutting. We don't worry about blocking backside. He's on, he'll fall through the linebacker. He's gonna pull. If he doesn't have a guy here or here, he's gonna, he'll go ahead and pull too. We don't need him. If there's not a linebacker, if everybody's shifted, it just depends on, that's kind of one of our rules. So get as many people out there as we can. We don't wanna block air. Okay, and so we'll pull anybody we don't have to block, don't have somebody to block. Go ahead. Hey, oh, there it goes. I did draw them in. Like I said, we we, uh, we always want to get a crack if we can. And I just picked this up. Yeah, you talk 28 years of being a guru, huh? And uh, you go to one clinic. That's why you go to clinics. I go to about 10 a year and uh, because I want to pick up little things. But we always crack, and sometimes you have trouble because you're out too far, and you don't want to hit that kid in the back. Well. This guy's talking this summer, or, or no, not this summer, it's like in January or February, and he says, all of, and he loved to crack, his team up in Northern California. And so they just teach, he teaches his kids to take a, an open step back. And it just gives them a better angle. And obviously we do all the same things. We usually yell the kid's number or yell something at him right before we hit him so he'll turn and look at you, and then it's not behind him. And that's a good, good thing to learn with your little kids too, because if you yell right before he gets there, he'll turn around and go, <laughs> you know, and it's, it's kind of a crowd rave, you know, they like the moves and odds. But, but that little step, that was a big thing that we picked up this year and implemented it. I think it was a couple years ago. It was last year, not this year, because we implemented it this year. And it shows you the double teams. It's almost all the same philosophy. We don't try and block anybody. If we don't have to block this guy or nobody's here and he's out here or out here, we don't even block him. We send him what we call TDA, touchdown alley. And in the films, you'll see a ton of crackback blocks from the backside guys coming all the way across, picking up traffic, following the ball carrier. We actually knocked three guys out in one play um, last year against A.B. Miller, knocked them out. And, uh, you know, we don't go out to hurt anybody, but it's, <coughs> those, those blindside blocks are fun. You know, the kids really like them, and uh, that's, I guess that's why we wear pads to protect us. So. Um, this will be 11 trap, so it shows you the same thing, mesh points all the same, bringing through, leading through on the trap, there's the trap block, you kind of see what everybody else is doing here. We bring our tackle right behind and up, center blocks, should block away, if he doesn't have a, depending on where the guy is, go ahead, we go down on safety, we reach, or go touchdown alley, and touchdown alley. And there's the fake up the middle, six guy. trap up the middle. How so far is that six guy off? If we say we say between 10 and 12 yards. 
Now he will cheat back and forth, and I tell him, we don't just cheat, even on pass plays, come on in and, and go at seven, you know, and run out your pass play out of a seven. So that way you're not just keying every time we're going to run cracks. You've got to make him think all the time. So he'll go really in between, we say 10 to 12 yards, but it's really 7 to 12 yards playing with that. So, you know, and, I, and we do, coach, coaches guys like to talk a lot. They'll talk at you, so we do a little bit of that ourselves. But he'll, you know, he'll be out here and he'll see the guy. Hey, I'm coming to you, number 8. You better get ready. I'm going to crack you, number 8. You know, he's doing stuff like that. And, and uh, make him think, and then he goes out on his spot, fast pattern. So... <laughs> This is some box spin formation. It's just a few plays. Again, trying to suck up a lot, but um, so it gives you a chance to see how we call our plays. This is this box spin 38 sweep, which you kind of saw already. Box spin 47 sweep out of the same formation. Box spin 11 trap. Box spin 22 trap. So it'd be snap 22 trap. We call it whenever we say snap. Before the, the, the number, that means he's snapping to that back. So that's the only time our center has to know he's snapping. If, if we snap to three or one, it doesn't matter. He's still snapping the mesh point. Go ahead. Same formation. Box spin, 38 sweep. Why did I call it? Why did I run the same play? I must have been sleepy. <coughs> okay, uh, go over the next one. Now, now we're in a little bit different. Okay, now we talked about the fullback. Getting out of his spot, putting him in a flanker. We run the same thing, and I just call box spin, flanker left, 38 sweep. And all we're trying to do is move somebody that's causing us problems out. And this gives you an idea of how to move people. Then we come down here. This is our invert. Okay, box spin, invert, 48, 47 sweep. Sorry. Box spin, invert, 47 sweep. So run the seven side, we invert. Now, this is what I was talking to you about, the unbalanced look. We get a lot of different defenses. And it's a lot of fun. Most of the time, they create angles for us to block. Um, I don't know why. It's, it's, it's just a weird-looking formation. We're balanced. Really, we're balanced right now. But we look unbalanced. But we're really balanced because the backfield gives us a balanced look. We have just as much power to the left as we do to the right with blocking on our line. And so that's what fools teams because most of them shift to, they like to shift to where they see all this, this here. You know, if they're trained right, up front, all the line shifts down. Then if they do, we can audible and run you know, away, from, away from their line shift. But most of the time, we're going to get a shift this way because they like to, with the backers, they all like to shift to where our backers are. They might have a safety, but he really shades, and they usually man a man on him, or they'll have a safety here. And we can just really outnumber. We feel like we can just really get out there. Box invert, fly slot. So now it's, it's just adding the word, it's still your fly. Fly was here, fly slot in between, okay, 47 sweep. And this gives you a different look again. Box spin formation, some more. 12 roll, so that gives you an idea on passes. It's all the same action, nothing's really changed. We still pull in the yards with a pulling look because we like to do a play action with almost everything we do. Box spin, flanker left. 47 screen left. That's the screen I was showing you when we showed, you know, the uh, different actions. <coughs> One thing that's really neat, I don't know about you, we picked this, another thing I picked up from another guy um, that I, we love, and it absolutely has changed our screen game, screen blocking. How many times, you know, we taught our kids 1,001, 1,002 release, and they all release, and they all run out there, and man, it looks good until they can't figure out who to block. You know, their heads are turning, and guys run right by them, right? This guy I was listening to a few years, I think it was last year, um, we, it's just automatic. We know who we're blocking. Tackle or the outside man, doesn't matter who it is. It could be the tight end. In this, in this situation, it's the tight end. He's going to go right now, or it's a guard, I'm sorry, we're using a guard. He's going to go right now, right down the line, looking right at the numbers. And he's got, he's got the corner, no matter what. Now, if there's nobody there, he can turn up, but he's still spying corner. He's going after the last guy out there, and that's his man. Then we bring the second guy. The second guy is going to come in, and he is going to loop. You can see him right here. He's going to loop up in, and he has first guy to show up the middle. I'm sorry, no, first guy to show inside. Thank you. You got the pointer. First guy to show inside. So he's just going to come, hook, 
And then the center has the easy job. He's just coming up the middle and cleaning up first guy he sees. But it's helped us a lot with that tackle that gets out there, swiveling his head, not knowing who to block. Really, really is. Uh, we see a lot of better, better blocking up. Uh, I'm going to let you kind of just look at that. We uh, invert. That's passing formation. But it's the same mesh point. Everything's the same. Box invert, fly, slot, 25, shovel pass. Okay, so we run our spin action, spin action, and then we shovel it back to the fullback. And we lead through with the guard and the tackle. We've been real successful. You see a lot of that in different plays. Go ahead. Bear, spin, bear being double tight again. Um, big on big is what we like to get here, and it's just 38 sweep, nothing different. So I guess what I'm just saying, trying to show you here is, it's running this, you get all these different plays, and this is just like, I'll show you when we get to the end, but it's all the same plays. It's just a lot of different formations. And there, you have the same mesh point, the defense has to worry about the same thing, but now you just added different guys carrying the ball. There's always three or four guys that can carry the ball. Go ahead. And we can pass or we can uh, run out of the same formations. Bear spin, some more formations and passes. A little bit of invert, a little nasty uh, double trap. We call that double trap. And you get a um, double X block, sorry, double X block. You guys want to get into that, little guys. Um, over here again, fly slot, 56 shuffle, we shuffle to our tight end. Tight ends love it. So they finally get to run inside and look like a running back. Go ahead. Whirly, one back. So what we're basically going to get here is another, just another look. Four back will stay, they're best both going to mesh, he's going to step, and he's going to go sweep or trap, or direct snap here, and we carry out our fakes, but it's just one back, or at least one back, go ahead. We'll sweep that, that he could have countered, given the counter back. We're just showing some different things with the four, what we can do with him, he'll block down, he'll go to block down and then run the outcome in the post corner. And we can move, just showing the quarterback the same, same things, doing the same thing out of worry. Just another look, but now we're only spinning one with one back. Worry formations, here's the 38 sweep again, out of one back, out of Worley, 45 counter out of Worley, 21 trap, snap 21 trap, 57 screen left, out of one back spinning. Uh -huh. Coach, on the 38 Worley, does the quarterbacks taking the snap and then spinning and giving that, it. That's three. correct. Does three ever take the ball direct? Yes. And when he does, we'll do one of two things. Because if I call Worley, I'll call snap 38, our, our box Worley snap 38 sweep. Then he will go ahead and carry out his spin fake. He's already caught the ball, but he'll step. He'll step, catch the ball. Our quarterback, when he steps, it's kind of funny looking. He's over here. He'll step, a you know, crossover step, or in Brad's case, he'll just step, and the ball goes right by him. Instead of stepping to his mesh point, he steps forward to the mesh point. So now the mesh point's here. That gives the guy the room for the ball to go through. He catches after the ball's gone through, fakes, and then goes to his trap. If we call power sweep, now he's just going to lead on the direct snap. So now you got your quarterback going with you. It's direct snap sweep, 38 sweep. Give me the two calls, Coach, the one where the where the quarterback takes the snap and the one where the three back takes the snap. What's the two calls? Okay, box whirly, 38 sweep. That would be a handoff to the back. And box snap, 38 sweep. Okay. Whenever we wherever you hear the snap, that's that means the back, that back's getting the ball. Three backs getting the ball. But snap two, two backs getting the ball. Snap 12 or 11, quarterback's gonna get the ball and go. And everybody else carrying out their face. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this is some more whirly. Again, it's the same plays. Now we have motion. Um, fly rip. We have more motion, but it's still 16 onside trap. That's the trap I was telling you about. Nice little trap onside. You got the guards pulling and trapping instead of looks like a sweep. Because both guards pull in a sweep. Instead of <coughs> pull up and kick out the end. But it's 47 sweep. Now we have a bubble out of our, this is out of trips. And we just call this spread trips. Pretty simple as picture spread trips. And instead of being in spread, they come over and get in trip formation. And there's our shovel pass out of uh, spread. Actually, this is box flanker left. Sorry, box flanker left. 
doing 45 shovel. So what we've done is just moved our full back. And what's real nice about that is it just takes, you got a lot of traffic in here, so what we've done is taken our fullback and put them out here. So what has to happen? So a corner has to come out here. Now a tight end usually, that's why we like to keep our tight end over here instead of when we switch, leaving the guard and tackle here, because they have to honor him as a receiver now. So basically what you're doing here is now you pull that corner who's usually off the edge, pull him out here, and now they got to step a safety or come up man to man and play that tight end. So now it creates a lane, that lane up in here, and a nice block for us. So that's, that's basically the, the philosophy behind that. Go ahead. Now we have Rocker. The difference in Rocker is, okay, we talked, you showed it to you earlier, he's just going to step back. He, he Rocker's back step, mesh point, he's in motion and comes through. As he Rocker's back, he comes through and then he steps. He can step here and counter, he can step here and go, he can step here, and they, we decided that by the play call. But, that's the mesh point, and that's the idea right there. Gives you an idea on the blocking. The blocking doesn't change at all. It's all the same blocking, but a different look and a different type of spin action. Hopefully some of this is coming together, and you start getting the idea. This rocker formations, again, 48 sweep, uh, 47 sweep, sorry, 47 sweep out of it. So you're running your sweep, you're running a trap, you're running the same plays you're running Basically what I did was try and run the same plays with a different action. So now we got invert of our backfield again. We run a 38 sweep back to the long side. And then rocker 33 trap, so the short side trap. Go ahead. Again, shovel pass. So we get a shovel pass look out of this. And we're coming back against the grain and we're running underneath with the 56 shovel. So the tight end is going to get the ball underneath coming back when we have all this action going here. So we got fake. Quarterback, spin and step, pass, and fake, and we get a shovel pass coming back underneath. 12 boot pass, that's our normal pass. And then our quick screen, we got quick screens or screens off of that, but it shows you that we can run all those same plays with just a different rocker action or a different spin action we call it, okay? Triple spinner, here's the, the star, and it gets to show you, go ahead. We can run all the same thing, powers, traps, counters, sweeps, pass, motion, fly motion, which is our fullback in motion, and you get that explosion look. That's why we like to call it star. We stole star because of the starburst. That's where we stole the word star from. You know, people still call it.